All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at topic nine of this first uh, chapter, which is called perfect squares. Now, hopefully, you guys have been introduced to a little bit of what perfect squares are. Um, perfect squares are numbers like 25, 36, 49, basically two numbers that multiply together to give you that product. Now, with perfect squares, we have something called the square root property. And what the square root property says is if you have a number squared, and it is equal to an n. So think 5 squared is equal to 25. Then what that property says is x, which is 5, is equal to the positive negative square root of 25. So if I were to take the square root of 25, my answer would be 5, which hopefully you guys are familiar with. But what that property allows us to do is to cancel out these squares in problems. So we're going to look at a couple of these. Uh, you will see this quite a few times throughout these classes and uh, hopefully this can help you out. So for this first one we have y minus 6 squared equals 81. So what you got to ask yourself is how do you cancel out that square? Well this property says we take the square root. Now when you take a square root, the square and the square root cancel and you're left with y minus 6. Now on this side you're having to find the square root of 81 well, the square root of 81 is 9. But back up here, it says it's plus or minus, so you have to take into account the positive and the negative values of 9. And then you solve this like normal, adding 6 to both sides, and you get 6 plus and minus 9, which if you solve this, 6 plus 9 is 15, 6 minus 9 is negative 3, and those would be your two solutions. And in these problems, you do need two solutions. Now, for example B, I'm going to follow the same process. I've got my x plus 6 squared equals 12, so I've got to again cancel out that square, so I'm going to take that square root, so those two things cancel. You're left with x plus 6 equals the square root of 12. Don't forget your plus and minus. Then you can subtract 6, and those two things cancel, and you get x is equal to a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 12. Now you can go two ways with this. This negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 12 can be solved in your calculator, or you can break it down using factors. Now the factors we want to use here are 4 and 3, because 4 is a perfect square. So this looks like this instead. So it's x, or sorry, 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is my 12. Now if you continue on, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 3 cannot be done, so we leave it the way it is, and that would be your final answer. And again, you could put that in your calculator and figure out those values as well, uh, but in this case, that one works. All right, for C, you can see this one right up here at the top of the board. Um, for C, we've got a trinomial, but one specific thing about that trinomial is it is a perfect square trinomial. And we saw this previously where we can factor this down because you have a square, a square, and this is twice that value, you would factor it down to x plus 4, and then this side would be 25. Okay, and I'm going to pause there for just a minute, um, and we're going to come back and solve this in a second. Now, for D, it's the same basic idea, except for I've got to get this 180 to the other side. So I've got 5x squared minus 60x, and I'm going to add 180 over to the left-hand side. Now, looking at these, this is not an easily factorable problem based on what you know, but they do have a greatest common factor of 5. And when you factor that out, remember, it becomes a division problem. So 60 divided by 5 is that 12. And then um, 180 divided by 5 is 38. And you get this. Uh, actually, I apologize. That's 36. And now you try and factor this. Well, this works out to be a perfect square type of problem. Very much like this one and very much like the two that we saw over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys pause this video, take just a couple minutes, and solve these two problems the same way we solved the ones over on the left. Okay, pause it now and give it a try. OK, 
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you guys had time to solve those out. <clears throat> so going back to C, we take the square root of both sides here. So those two are canceling. You get an x plus 4. Square root of 25 is plus and minus 5. You then subtract the 4. So you got x is equal to a negative 4 plus and minus 5. This is something that can be solved. So negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 4 minus 5 is a negative 9. And there are your two solutions. For D, we solve it much the same way. Um, now, we can't take the square root just yet because we got this 5 here. So just like a normal problem, if that was just an x, you would divide by 5. So those cancel out. So you got x minus 6 squared equals 0. From here, we take our square roots. So the square and the square root cancel. That leaves me with an x minus 6 equals the square root of 0, which is just 0. And then add 6 to both sides and you end up with x equals 6, and there's your final solution. Now, for any of these, you can take those numbers, substitute them back in, and check and prove that they work, and in those cases, they will. Okay, final part of this. We're going to take and solve this word problem. So this is when you may actually apply this to a real-life problem. So it says the formula, h equals negative 16 t squared plus h sub 0, tells how long it takes an object to fall from height h in t seconds if h sub 0 is the initial height. How long does it take a ball, drop, uh, a ball to hit the ground if it's dropped from 205 feet? So the t is the time, the h sub 0 is the initial height, and your height is 0. Okay, so we're going to look at this and substitute in what we know. Well, we know this value, 205 feet. That is the initial height, so that's going to be your h sub 0. Okay, so we're going to have 16 t squared, sorry, negative 16 t squared plus 205. Now what you have to decide is what is h? Well, we want to know how long does it take to hit the ground. And if you think of height from the ground, the ground would be 0. So this is now 0. Okay, now using this, we're going to solve. So you can subtract 205 from both sides. Now remember, solving is basically getting the variable by itself. So you've got negative 205 is equal to a negative 16t squared. Okay, now divide by that negative 16. Uh, these things you're going to eliminate out. You take and solve this out. Well, over here you're going to have a t squared. I'm going to move this. A little bit on the left so we can follow. So you've got a t squared. Pulling out the calculator, 205 divided by 16 gives you 12.8125. Now to get rid of this square, just like we saw previously, you take the square root. So the square and the square root cancel. You're left with a t. In your calculator, you can take this square root. And the square root here is 3.579. Seconds, and remember you have that plus and minus. Now, thinking in terms of context, the plus and minus doesn't make a lot of sense because we're talking time. So we're going to eliminate the plus and minus because you can't have a negative time, and it would take 3.579 or about 3.58 seconds for that ball to hit the ground. All right, so that's uh, dealing with perfect squares. If you have any questions, please contact me online, and good luck with your assignment.